Hi guys, Kant here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I just want to share you about why learners are failing in data analytic interviews. So now whenever we say, hey, what I need to learn to be a data analyst. So we say that, hey man, try to learn uh, Python, try to learn Power BI or try to learn SQL or try to learn Excel. So we try to say all these particular tools, but to be a successful data analyst and to crack the interviews on data analysis, so you need to have this particular ingredients. If you are able to view my screen, now in order to be a successful data analyst, the number one skill you need to have is a numerical reasoning. And after that, you need to have an ability to collect the insights, to describe the insights, and even to understand the insights. So that is very, very important. So that's going to be your uh, second ingredient or the second skill which you need to plan it. And the third one, you need to know the difference between metrics and you need to know the difference between KPI. So as a data analyst, you try to demonstrate metrics and you demonstrate KPIs on your dashboards. So that is something very important. And then you need to know about the fourth one, we call it as knowledge on database. So like MySQL or we can say SQL, Snowflake, BigQuery, any of this. And you need to have a knowledge on data preparation. And you need to have a basic understanding of statistics and principles of data visualization. Before we are getting into the video, for example, if you have any questions, so while you are watching, if you have any questions related to whatever the subject we are discussing, if you have any questions, please share your views in the comments. So I go through your comments and I can just make a video around it. And not only that, so like in case if you are new to my YouTube channel, please do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's start with numerical reasoning. And uh, when, when you're trying to target data analytic position, in the interviews, the interviewers or the technical people primarily expect your numerical reasoning. So what is a numerical reasoning? If you can see here, so you need to have the number sense. What exactly number sense? This is a fundamental understanding of numbers, their relationships, and how they are used in different contexts. Now, as a data analyst, you collect the data, you collect their sales data, you collect their marketing data, you collect their finance data, and you start understanding the data. You want to present them as a report, or you want to present them as a visual representation. So while you're presenting, you need to know how exactly the data is related. So how exactly this data is represented so without knowing it, if you start uh, pulling the data into Power BI, you cannot provide a proper insights to your clients. So you need to have number sense. You need to have data interpretation based skills. So data interpretation is a concept of your number reasoning. So you, numerical reasoning. So you need to have the data interpretation. What exactly data interpretation? So the ability to extract meaning from presented data. So now as a data analyst, you are primarily, your primary goal is why sales are increasing or why the profits are increasing or why there is a huge amount of expenses. You want to explain the why behind the numbers you see in your company or in the data. If you are unable to perform data interpretation or if you lack data interpretation, most of the people have the same problem. So when the clients are explaining about their problem, they fail to translate that problem into analytical approach or they fail to translate that into an analytical approach. So because of that, they are unable to build a proper dashboard. So why they are unable to build a proper dashboard? When they look at the data, so based on the problem and they look at the data, they are unable to interpret the data. They are unable to identify the patterns from the data. So they are unable to solve the business problem. So the interviewer is going to check you with your data interpretation skills. So that's the reason what they do is they give business scenarios. So how you handle that scenarios, what data you collect, so why you are collecting data. So based on that, they are able to benchmark your data interpretation skills. And then you need to have the logical reasoning. So why you need to have the logical reasoning to draw the conclusions. So now you are comparing, you are doing multivariate analysis or you are doing bivariate analysis. So you are doing a thorough investigation. Why you are doing all that investigation through graphs or numbers is for the sake of drawing the conclusions. Conclusions. So if you lack the logical reasoning, you cannot draw the conclusions, means you cannot fix with what metrics you want to demonstrate on the dashboard. So that is very important logical reasoning. And finally, problem solving skills. So like uh, where exactly you are trying to apply your numerical skills and logical reasoning to solve the real world problem. So what are the real world problems? So the client need to know why this particular sales are not going well, or they want to know why this marketing budget is very high. How can we reduce the marketing budget and 
and how we can increase the efficiency of the business. So how we can increase the efficiency of our marketing. So now they want to understand the patterns, whatever the data you collected, they want to grab the patterns. To grab the patterns, you want to work on problem solving. So numerical reasoning skills going to help you to perform all these parameters. And after that, you need to know the insights. So you need to find the insights by using your numerical reasoning and by collecting the data, you need to identify the insights, not only finding the insights. So how you find the insights based on the client's problem statement, what clients are looking for. So based on that, you are identifying the insights and after identifying the insights, you need to describe it. The major challenge is the same thing. Now the our data scientists or data analysts, they are able to build mind-blowing reports. They can uh, develop a mind-blowing Power BI dashboards or Tableau dashboards, but they are unable to describe why they are trying to provide this insight or they are unable to describe why they are just trying to showcase this particular insight in that particular dashboard. And uh, when it comes to your uh, data analytic, you need to know the difference between a metric and you need to know the difference between a key performance indicator. So what exactly went by that? So now key performance indicators are the subset of your metric. So now all the metrics cannot be key performance indicators, but all the key performance indicators can be metrics. So the, what is the difference? For example, now if you are looking into the marketing, now uh, conversion rate is a metric. So or we can say number of impressions we are getting for an advertisement is a metric. So how much cost per conversion can be a metric or the number of clicks we are having, it's a metric or the amount of sales happen, it's a metric. Then what exactly the key performance indicator is now, for example, based on that particular marketing campaign, how much revenue you generated. So that can be your key performance indicator. So like how much, uh, for example, amount of target your salespeople made, that is a key performance indicator. So now key performance indicators are the metrics which helps us to measure whether your business is growing or whether your business is dropping. So example of another metric is CAC, cost, customer acquisition cost going to be your key performance indicator. Why? So if your customer acquisition cost is increasing, the performance of your business is dropping. So now in order to see your business is doing mind blowing, your customer acquisition cost need to be as minimal as possible. So that can be your key performance indicator. So all the metrics may not be KPIs, but so all KPIs can be called as your, uh, what is that, your metric. So now the more drill down version or more fine tuned version of your metric going to be your key performance indicator in simple KPI going to be how your business is measuring the growth, whether in upward direction or a backward direction, we can say metric versus key performance indicator. And then we need to know about databases, especially in the interviews, they focus on, so like whenever you are trying to collect the data for developing your reports, you need to look at various databases. And when you look at the databases, the database is going to have various data models. The data model can be star schema or it can be a snowflake schema. And you need to know what type of normalization form they used it. And you need to perform joins in order to you, you, you want to perform a joint based on fact table and a dimension table so that you are able to get the right quality data. If you are unable to understand the data, you are unable to collect the data, so now your entire analysis may go wrong. So you need to have the proper database knowledge. So by looking at the database, you need to understand whether it is in which normalization form, so what type of data model it is in, what type of join I need to do it in order to get the right amount of data from fact table and the dimension table. If you select a wrong join, again, you may end up with the wrong data selection. And finally, you need to have a data preparation. So for data preparation, you need to have two things, tool plus a business sense. So now you can to take any tool for data cleaning like Python or Altrix or Power Query, any of these tools you can take it. You can transform it or you can clean it. But while you are transforming, you cannot transform it as you know the tool, but you need to transform it based on the business sense, based on the importance of the data you need to uh, clean that particular uh, data. For that reason, you need to have a proper tool knowledge plus a proper business sense knowledge. And uh, you don't need to be a pro in statistics, but having a little bit knowledge on statistics like what is EDA, so or what exactly meant by central tendency, dispersion, how you do outlier treatment, so uh, how you check uh, 
if there are outliers to check mean or a median. So how standard deviation going to influence your analysis? So what is the standard error? What is central limit theorem? What is law of large numbers? So if you know the basic concepts, that would be very good. So like what is a quantile? So how someone identify an outlier, how outliers are calculated, how to treat them the best approaches. If you can learn it, why outliers going to impact your analysis. So understanding about your statistics going to help you to prepare your data better. And finally, you need to know uh, the principles of data visualization, especially why somebody selected a box plot or why to choose a pie chart or why to use a stacked bar plot, 100% stacked bar plot over a pie chart. So you need to know all these differences. So like if you take a box plot Y, in order to understand the distribution across multiple four quantiles and in order to identify the outliers, yes, box plot is good. And box plot is a top down view of a histogram. So why you're going with a line plot to understand the trend? So why you're going with your uh, bar plot to understand the comparison between a discrete data and a continuous data? Why you're going with a pie chart? In this way, you need to know how each graph works. You need to know the principles, what background to select, what color to select, so now uh, everything, so the details are very, very important. So the, know the principles of data visualization. Don't just say I created a histogram. Why you created histogram is more important than just creating a histogram. Now people who are learning data analytic, don't just learn Power BI, don't just learn SQL, don't just learn uh, your Python. For everything, learn why behind it. So in order to create any report, you need to use numerical reasoning, you need to use insights, you need to uh, include metrics and KPIs in your data analytic projects, you are dealing with databases in your project, you are dealing with preparation, statistics, and finally, principles of data visualization. All these ingredients going to give you one mind-blowing Power BI dashboard. So keep this point in the break.